Breakfast with Cassandra. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for taking the time and talking to me. I was wondering if you could maybe remember your first memory that you connect with music, like maybe an early childhood memory or something. Um. Oh, man, I'd never be able to remember like the first memory. Yeah. I will say um, I remember... Uh, just listening to music like on my school bus all the time back when like cd players were like a thing you had your own yes um did you buy it from your pocket money from my what from your pocket money uh i don't i don't remember yeah probably i mean i remember i was always like trying to save money for batteries hmm. which mm -hmm. is so funny to say now because like no one uses cd players i mean people use batteries but But and then like headphones things. yeah everything's like so different now yeah um, in my my new song uh motto i, I kind of talk about um flipping through cds in the store and stuff yeah and now when i think about it i'm like it's so weird it's like there's so many you know if you're like a teenager or, or even like early 20s now it's like You maybe never even did that stuff or whatever. No, you have options now. Yeah, it's it's way different. Mm. Can you remember the first CD that you bought with your own money? Oh man, I would I would have no idea. Uh, I was obsessed with like um, instrumentals. Mm. I'd get like uh, Eminem instrumentals or like uh, what was that that Fifty Cent. Um, How We Do. I think that was a song oh, yeah. with The Game or something. Yeah. And I remember I used to rap to that all the time. <laughs> I know, I got a terrible memory, so I don't remember every first CD that I had. But <laughs> but rap was like the first genre that resonated with you? Or was there something before um, that? Definitely like spoke to me the most for sure. Um, yeah, I fell in love with that. And then I kind of like... Um, that's what I listened to for years and i didn't really like listen to much else honestly mm -hmm. and then um once i got to like i think it was like i don't know 19 ish i started um <clears throat> like i would listen to some rock rap mm -hmm. i don't know if you like hollywood and dead's first album or something mm -hmm. where it was like kind of screamo but it's still rapping i thought some of that was like cool but um and then i started listening to like ed sheeran um adele yeah um you know stuff like that which i'm really happy that i did that just because i feel like it made my music kind of become different like where it wasn't just rap yeah. you know what i mean it's like a mixture of piano and strings and all that kind of stuff so Did your parents have an eye on the kind of l music you were listening to at that time? Did they have an eye on it? Mm -hmm. You mean like were they watching it? Yeah, because I imagine you were listening to rap music at such a young age. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely like sneaking in CDs that mm -hmm. my parents probably like, <laughs> wouldn't want me listening to. But I mean, I feel like that's what every kid does. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. And when did you actually start to write your own music? How did that happen? Were you conscious that you were writing a song or was it just, I don't know? Um, I used to only, I started off like freestyling where I would just make it up as I go. I had a karaoke machine in my, um, you know, I've talked about it in interviews, but like a little karaoke machine and then I'd take one mic that was hooked up and put it up against my CD player in my room to play the beat through there and then rap in the other mic. So it recorded on a tape at the same time. Um, but what, sorry, I forgot the, um, the how you started making music. Oh yeah. And that's that's when how you... I started. I started freestyling and I fell in love with listening to music and then listening to music kind of like turned into, Oh, what if I try to do this? I don't really, I just was like so passionate about it. I loved I don't know. I think that's what's cool about people is like everyone has a thing that they're like super passionate about. And that was like my thing. I just I wasn't good at it, but I loved it so much that I it made it made me eventually like work to get better at it. Yeah. And 
yeah, I just kept doing it. And then I started writing songs. Then I started recording. And I loved recording because it was, it's so crazy in the beginning when you like have never recorded a song that you wrote and then you hear your voice on a song that you wrote. It's just like, it's an, it's a cool experience in the beginning. So did you never actually listen to um, the karaoke machine songs that you produce kind of? Oh no, I listened to them. Okay. But What I was the just, feeling about it? Um... I mean, I thought it was cool. It yeah. just wasn't the same. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just like a tape and a yeah. Um, but no, that was like the beginning of hearing what I sounded like when I was rapping and like beats. I was always trying to get beats, and then my mom got me a the FL Studio program, Ooh. like the burnt the burnt disc that everyone had, where it's like <laughs> the rip off version. But um, yeah, I started making my own beats. Um, you know, and then recording to those. and So your parents knew that you were making your own music downstairs in a basement? Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Probably more than, probably the music. <laughs> I, I remember one of my sisters being like, oh my God, will you just stop? <laughs> like, it, I mean, any producer, or anyone will tell you, like, if you don't, like, when you consume music, like, you're just, like, listening to the song, right? But imagine, like, sitting in a studio and that song is being produced or recorded and someone's, like, pausing it, playing it, pausing it, playing it, replaying it, <laughs> replaying five, five seconds. Like, a producer is, like, replaying five seconds and they're messing with the, like, you know, whether it's a vocal or instrumental thing. And it's just, like, all day long you're doing that. So if you're someone who's just, like, in the room next door hearing that all day, you're like, oh, my God, like, shut this off. So I'm sure my family... Uh, My family's like super supportive, but they like, I'm sure if I was them, I would have been annoyed for sure. Yeah. Was um, somebody of your family, was a family member also the first per person or one of the first people that you showed your music to consciously choose or chose to do that? Uh, interesting. Um, I can't remember. I remember I had a friend that really liked rap music when you listen to it all the time. So I'm sure he was like one of the first people or my friends I would show. Sometimes my friends would come over and I'd want to like write raps with them. Hmm. Uh, I don't think they liked it as much as I did, but I remember <laughs> doing that with some of my friends. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably. I mean, yeah. I probably, probably did show my family, but my friends for sure, like, Yeah, I don't know. Were you always like so ballsy about your art and your music that... Because I imagine if I had to show that to somebody, I would be nervous as fuck to do that. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's like still nerve wracking to do it because like you... <clears throat> you're basically like putting your feelings out there for people to like critique. Mm -hmm. or say they don't like it you know it'd be like you sitting in this room and being like man today i feel depressed and here's why i feel depressed and then there's like 10 people standing there and they go i just don't like this mm. you know what i mean yeah. it's just like it's part of the the gig but it still doesn't change the fact that it's like weird yeah you know a people finding it boring that your pain or your story is boring doesn't resonate yeah, with them yeah i think it's i don't know sometimes i'm just like whatever and then there's other times where i'm still a human where i'm just like that just annoys me mm. or if there's something i feel really passionate about that i like really disagree with that someone's saying that i'm just like that doesn't even make sense to me mm. you know but Do you read the online comments and the comment section on, on I don't know, YouTube? Oh, yeah. Like, I definitely, like, whenever I drop something or am releasing something, I definitely like to see how my fans, I like to see the story and, like, how pe if people figure stuff out or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I love movies. And so I kind of like to craft my music as, like, so, uh, the next chapter, the next part of the series of a show or movie whatever um so yeah I, i do i'm definitely like i think like everyone i'm attracted to the negative more than the positive um but 
<clears throat> honestly, it's like a goal of mine to get offline a little more because I'm just like, it's not that I post a lot. It's just like I feel like we're all just like so addicted to our phones and it's like scary. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that's just for me personally. Yeah, for me as well. I can resonate with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, who are the first people nowadays you're showing your music to when you write a new song? Who's the first person you think of wanting um, to show it to? I show my wife. She's probably definitely one of the first people. Um, I have like a couple friends that I trust that I that will give me like their honest opinion if they don't like it or they do like it. They'll say, well, I don't like it. Um, what, cert- do, what do you do when they don't? <clears throat> um, I'll, I'll just ask them, like, what don't you like about it? Because sometimes uh, in the process of making music, you get so numb to it. Mm-hmm where you can't see it clearly Mm -hmm. anymore. Like you've just heard it so many times that it's just like background noise for you. And so you can't look at it for what it actually is. So it's helpful to show people who haven't heard it because they're just getting, you're seeing the first experience that you had months ago Mm -hmm. in someone else and finding people you trust who will actually say, now I don't always agree. You know, my wife might love a song that I'm like, yeah, it's good but I don't love it or, you know, the other way around. But it's like, I still know she'll tell me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like my friends, like one of my good friends, he'll just, I know he's, he likes rap a lot more than singing stuff. So he's always going to gravitate towards that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, no, I definitely um, value opinions, but also there's just certain things you're not going to agree So it sounds like you seek the opinion of people who are not professional musicians or working in the industry. Yeah, I mean, one of my best friends is who I make a lot of my songs with. So obviously I'm getting his feedback while we're working on it. And he's definitely a professional. But yeah, people who just like consume music. Because the the problem, I feel like sometimes people like a normal consumer is one of the most important opinions Mm -hmm. because it's like that's who's consuming your music it's like it's great if you play it for you know the label or like the guy who you know other producer music producers or stuff but sometimes they're just like so focused on things that no one listens to Mm -hmm. so it's good to get someone who can just listen to music normally and isn't like if you make movies for a living every time you watch a movie you're gonna be like Why did they do that like that? Or I'm, oh, I like the coloring they did here. It's like if you're a normal person watching it, you're just like, I like this movie or I don't like this movie. Yeah, so awesome. I do think it's valuable to watch that and see how normal people react to it. Yeah. Also, I can Im- I I would imagine that professionals are looking for mistakes, kind of. Yes. Yes. And non-professionals are more in the feeling zone yes. of what- which I think is actually more important like that happens to me all the time in my uh, record process is where like all i can hear are mistakes i can't even listen Mm -hmm. to the song all i can hear is what's wrong with it or that's wrong i gotta fix this and i can't even listen to it and i have a terrible ocd it's just kind of gotten worse in that area so sometimes i cannot listen to the song until i fix what the problem was because i'll just obsess about the problem yeah and knowing i want to fix it and it's like torture to listen to it so it's really (laughs) annoying is that just with your own music or can you enjoy other artists yeah it's just with my own music like i can listen to other artists music and i'm fine because it's not mine Mm -hmm. i might have opinions like oh i feel like the 808s too loud like they should have mastered it different or whatever but i'm but i'm like i can listen to it fine yeah it's actually frustrating because i'll like listen to stuff and i'll be like oh i feel like my stuff my mix mixing and mastering is what kills me (laughs) in the process people don't understand that world but for me it's like torture because you make something and mixing and mastering is super important and if you don't get it right it can change how your whole song sounds yeah and so it's like torture for me because also i'm like what was this version better was this version better and then i get stuck in a loop where i'm like (laughs) I literally on this album sat in my car for like 10 hours straight listening to like two or three different versions of the same song trying Mm -hmm. to pick one. 
because right. I was like, well, I like this better in this version, and yeah. I, I like this and this, and that's, yeah. So, but it also sounds like you never get the satisfaction of, okay, this song is perfect now. I like yeah. it now. I got it right. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I'll get to the end and be like, all right, I feel good, and sometimes I don't. I think this process for this album just it took me so long, and I was just having like some of my own personal issues uh, that it just it just like took too long, and so I got too numb to it, and then it made it very difficult to like make decisions and finish it. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it's my least favorite part of the process for sure is mixing and mastering it and turning it in. <laughs> Because then when you know it's over, when you turn it in, you're like, it's in, it's over. Yeah. You so, can't work on it anymore. Yeah. It's in other people's hands. If somebody um, were to say, I'm sure a lot of people are saying it, but um, I love NF, I love listening to his music, and I also love who are some artists that you would love to be named in a row with. Uh... I mean, I'd rather not be named in a row. I feel like <laughs> I'd rather, uh, I don't know. I feel like, I'm not saying I'm like, oh, I have like, nobody in the world can do what I do. That's not what I'm saying. But I do feel like uh, me and Tommy, who I've worked, my buddy I've worked with for like 10 years. I do think we kind of like created a lane. Like, I don't think I got as big as I did because I'm um, the best I think I, him and I, like, created a genre that didn't exist. So I really do feel like, especially nowadays in music, one of the biggest ways to become successful, even though, like, the game's changing a lot since, like, from when I started, but um, is to really be different. Like, mm -hmm. start something that other people aren't doing. Mm -hmm. You know, when I do a song that sounds more like a Drake record it doesn't do that well for me not because the song's not good it's just like i think people expect different from me mm -hmm. because i've done a different sound it's like some people will say oh every song has strings and piano it's like you could say that about everyone's album you know you could go to adele's record and be like oh the whole album is piano But it's like, yeah, but who cares? I mean, that's like this her style. Like, that's what she does. And for me, I feel like I've kind of created a lane where it's like, yeah, I like the sounds that I like, but I always feel like I mix it up enough. And I'm also doing something other people aren't doing. So I feel like people come to my music for that because they're like, yeah, I mean, we can get a normal hip hop song from other artists, but I'm doing more of a, like a musical, theatrical thing. So... Would you have a name in mind for your own genre? No. No, I just describe it as like like a movie trailer. A movie trailer? I, I don't know. It's like part of it. Like it's like a story. It's like a a journey. I like my rec My records are very... Cinematic. Cinematic, but also like they just jump around so much. It's like, you know, hope is a... Um, there's a bunch of horror film sounds in there, but I'm rapping on hip hop kind of drums at one point, but also it's like an emotional string thing at the end. Like if you hear that instrumental by itself, you could put that in a, a movie. You'd have to mix it different without my voice on it, but you could do that. And then the next song motto is, it's not like pop, but it's kind of like, It's catchy like that, but it also feels a little alternative with the way the drums are, you know. And then the song with Corday is like very hip hop. Yeah, I want to talk about that later. Yeah, I, I love that song. And then Mama's like super personal, super emotional. Um, so yeah, it's just like the whole record is just kind of up and down, which I've always loved to do because. Uh, but it still all sounds like me. I think it like all connects. Yeah. And what comes first in your process? Is it the instrumental or the lyrics? Uh, instrumental. Mm -hmm. Every time I try to do the lyric without the instrumental, it always like ends up, not always, but most of the time, it's just not right. Because I, I move with whatever the music's making me feel. 
and I write according to that because it's it's crazy. Like, I'd love to show people how you can take the exact same lyrics and literally just change, you know, the instrumental, and it will make you feel way different, or it'll feel weird. Like, why is he singing that over this? Um, so yeah, I definitely think the instrumental first is like the way to go. But I do have a like gone. I think I started I started writing that like a cappella that song with Julia Michaels while I was like carrying my son outside. I was walking around singing that and coming up with melodies. I didn't I finished it like with the actual chords. But um so yeah, sometimes it works out but that's very rare for me. <laughs> Um, you already touched on it a little bit because you, you also said in an interview before that you're a perfectionist. And sometimes uh, that is good in some areas, but in others, it hinders you a lot. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you in which areas you think it's holding you back. Well, <laughs> it used to be uh, being a perfectionist made me like really good at my job because it made me work really hard to keep making something the best it could be this album with like my ocd and ocd like jumps around to a lot of things but it actually like a, a lot, some people get ocd and they like actually can't they can't do their jobs anymore because they're like they have an obsession with something around their job and it doesn't allow them to complete it but like That was kind of happening to me on this album where it's like I would get writer's block. Then I would start obsessing about anything I did right. Was it good enough? And then I wouldn't be able to finish anything because I wouldn't think it was good enough. Or I would write five verses for one verse and I wouldn't use any of them. And I would just keep second guessing what I was doing. Um, yeah, I just had never had the process where I like wasn't usually my perfection perfectionism was like allowing me it was just making me work harder and on this process it was like i was working hard but it, i couldn't complete things i could nothing was good enough so i wasn't i couldn't get anything done like i had two months where i was writing like every day and i could like there was literally days where i, I wouldn't even get like two lines that i would keep or i would write a verse and i would just be like i'm not using this so and the obsession with like i need to make something fresh Mm -hmm. um, I need to make something different. But then sometimes you just like, you're too obsessed with it that you're just like trying to go too far or too worried about what other people are going to think. Mm -hmm. Um, just like any artist, I know it's coming, but it's like, you, you know, someday you're going to fall off. Like that's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I think naturally the older I get, the more years that go by, the more pressure I feel like how much time do I have left? I want to, you know, I want to capitalize and take this moment in while I can. But at the same time, it's like if you worry about that stuff too much, I feel like it starts to like hinder your decision making and stuff like that. So that that kind of happened. How do you get out of that downward spiral in in moments when you think, okay, that that's not good enough, that that's not a, not I don't know. The li the lines are not perfect enough. How do you get out I, of that? I couldn't get out of it for a while. I, I would be stuck in a loop of just like, I couldn't even describe it. Like I became obsessed with like timing. Like is, are my vocals on time? And I would make things actually worse. It was like a very weird thing. Like I would become obsessed with the, sometimes The hard part for me was, like, I feel like I couldn't figure out what was actually OCD and what was actually a real problem. And I have that struggle sometimes where it's like, I can't tell if uh, if I'm fixing a real problem or if I'm just obsessing about something. But what happens is, like, what I realized in this process was most of the time there was a real problem, but the issue was because there was a problem, I would assume there was problems everywhere. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So if I like, if I messed up in a verse or something was off time or whatever, then I would be listening to every song obsessively thinking like, well, why I never do that? Why is this off or whatever? And then every song I'd be like, this is off. This is off. This is off. Is every verse off? Is this? And then all of a sudden you're just like sitting there for hours listening to things. And yeah, 
And then do you need somebody from the outside coming in and telling you, okay, this well, is good enough now? That's, that's the, uh, I mean, my wife for sure, like, because she knows me, obviously, but uh, I see a OCD therapist specifically, and OCD is like a whole complicated thing, but for me, that was like the best thing I ever did, because... I didn't know I had OCD at one point, and I feel like if you don't know you have it, that's how you get, like, super depressed because you'll just c convince yourself you're crazy, so. Yeah, good job on you doing that. Yeah. Um, you also said once about the same topic that um, you felt like you are not good enough, but that was in a context where you were talking about your work and not overcoming a song that you don't like enough to put it out or to, yeah. Um, but you specif specifically said that you felt like you are not good enough. And I was wondering if you do not separate your art from yourself as a person. Yeah, my identity is definitely like too wrapped up in my job, mm -hmm. for sure. And I feel like that's a lot of people. Um, Like, if I put out a bad song or my album doesn't do that good, that really shouldn't be, like, a reflection of me as an individual. But um, it is. So that's definitely a struggle I have where it's like I don't know how to separate it because it's such an important part of my life. And I'm a driven person, and I like trying to one-up myself and get better. And I think all those things are good. It's just... I wish I could do it without having my identity so wrapped in it, wrapped up in it. Because I do think that's what I'm saying. It like hinders your decision making because you're so worried about what other people are going to think. Especially nowadays. It's like, yeah. I feel like no one has their own opinion anymore. They just go on the internet and it's like you're reading comments before you've even heard a song yourself. And so it's like, if the first three comments are, I don't like this, then it's like your brain is already going, well, maybe I don't like this. You know, I feel like people don't know how to um, think for mm -hmm. themselves anymore. Do you, you know? see that in yourself as well? No. Mm -hmm. No, I uh, I definitely know how to think for myself. And I also like question everything. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm still human. There's sometimes, but... I, at least at this point in my life, I feel like I'm, uh, I don't like to just agree to, st agree to things just because like other people agree to it or like think it. I like to ask questions and be like, well, what about this? What about this? You know, mm -hmm. but that's just my personality. Yeah. Um, there's a line in Moro where you say, would have gave an anything to be respected by the artist I was listening to, but not, but not no more. Them days are history. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what shifted your opinion on that? I think just once I got in the industry, I just realized like, I don't know, like the older I get, the more I do music, um, I don't know. I just, like, don't care about it as much. Like, um, it's not that, like, some people try to take lines like that and make it, like, a personal thing, like, towards a, a person specifically. But for me, it's just more, like, overall, I've, I've never felt less of a need to, like, get the nod from anybody uh, artist-wise. Just because I see, like, I'm thankful and like proud of like what i've accomplished whether or not i'm ever like get the nod from the industry itself i i'm proud of like the shows i'm able to do and the records i'm able to sell so i guess that that's kind of what that was for me it's like i don't really need it's not that a nod from certain artists wouldn't mean something to me because they would but it's just i don't feel the same as i would have so i guess Yeah, the reason is just once you've been around and you've seen the industry more, I feel like you feel, I don't know, it just kind of shifted how I thought about the industry and music and stuff like that. What was the most, I don't want to say devastating, but I don't know. Um, what was surprising to you about the music industry that you thought differently about when you started out making music? Um, 
I don't know. I think you. I think when you start off, you know, like, oh, this is going to be hard work. But then you're like, once you're actually in it, you're like, oh, this is. It just everything's different than what you think it is. You know, I think you think you're going to get signed, and then instantly you're going to blow up, or like, I don't know. I was fortunate. I I got a hardcore fan base like pretty early on and was able to start playing my own shows and and do all that but the number one thing i'd say, probably say like some of the politics stuff mm-hmm. um it's a way smaller world too than like people think it's not yeah. like that big uh so yeah probably that What do you mean with politics when it comes to labels and releasing stuff and stuff like that? Um, yeah, or just like artists or mm. priority of certain people. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like a, a lot of like things that just like wouldn't make sense to me. Or like if someone just doesn't like you personally, it's like they'll do things to hinder mm -hmm. what you're doing or okay. whatever yeah so yeah um about the not thing um that we talked about what is then if not the recognition from other artists what the is what? The, what was the first thing you said the the not thing the recognition from other artists that you're not seeking oh, the anymore not thing. yeah oh, okay, the not okay. what did I yeah, say? Yeah. Yeah, i'm sorry. sorry um what is then the most satisfying aspect for you about your music Uh, one of the most satisfying things would probably be like recording music and making a song that I love and hearing it and seeing it connect with people. But also um, a lot of times when you're like in the studio um, working on stuff and you're like you, you're not performing live shows and stuff like that, I feel like you can start to get like a little disconnected, not like disconnected from your fans, but like you don't realize sometimes what you're doing still. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like getting on the road, um, even though I haven't loved touring in the past, just because it's like, after a certain amount of time on the road, it just gets dark for me. I start getting like depressed and stuff, but um, it has gotten better. And I would say getting on the road and seeing like, it's like a reminder, like, oh, this is, awesome like yeah i made this song in the studio but like now i'm witnessing thousands of people singing it and like i don't know that's that's a cool reminder and something that i've grown to like love and be more thankful for because now it's like it's just a cool reminder to be like oh people actually care about this yeah. thing that i do yeah you or, actually or it see meant the impact something to them you know yeah yeah you actually see the impact because I imagine seeing the impact online with comments and shares. I mm -hmm. don't know. It might not be as satisfying as seeing thousands of people in front of you singing your songs. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Yeah. Um, about your music videos, they're also very much cinematic. Yeah. Um, there's so much to see. They're so visual, but also so many references and Easter eggs. How much involved are you in the idea for a music and uh, music video and then in directing it uh extremely involved <laughs> probably more involved than I, i wish <laughs> i was sometimes <laughs> um yeah no i love making music videos it has gotten more difficult because they're bigger productions i always was like oh i want to make a movie or a short film which i probably still want to try a short film just to see how i like it but i love directing um, but it's just so stressful. I wish I could just enjoy it, but I'm just so stressed the whole time. And What's like, stressing you most about it? Like, I just want to get, make sure I have all the shots. It, it never, you never have enough time. You just mm -hmm. never do. You think you're going to have enough time, but you just don't. So you're always scrambling to get, um, like in hope, I didn't have enough time in one of the shots we were doing. So we just had to literally just make something up for like 20 seconds. We, I just had to make something up on the spot. Okay, I'm just going to walk here and rap here. And then he's going to come up and push me or whatever. Like there was supposed to be like a CGI thing that happened there. It's just like there's so many details, especially in that video. I wish I would have done behind the scenes. Like that was the hardest video I've ever shot. 
but people probably don't know when they watch it, you know. Yeah. Like, it's a crazy process. So I am definitely involved. Uh, my wife's actually, like, good at coming up with video ideas. Like, she came up with the uh, the time music video <laughs> idea. Um, so she, like, sometimes I'll just be like, you got to give me an idea. And I'm, like, out creatively. Because so, I'm so involved in every aspect I just get like super exhausted from the merch, mm -hmm. the music videos, writing, producing, you know, with I like to be in the room when we make the beats, like a lot of the beats and stuff. So it's like sometimes I just hit my limit. I'm like, anybody tell me, like, give me an idea for this. So. <laughs> but is it the lack of trust in other people that you cannot? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm always like, well, they're not going to think about it the way I think about mm -hmm. it or they're not going to execute it the way I'll execute it. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're wrong, but yes, it's I'm like, a very, I'm a control freak. 100%. I'm like a pretty nice guy, but when it comes <laughs> but, to, when it, but. when it comes to work <laughs> stuff, sometimes I'm, I am like, I'm so stressed. I just become like a person that I, I wish I wasn't, but it's, I don't, I don't know sometimes how to do it. Like, You'd have to be on a video shoot. Like, me and my video guy, we laugh because we've been working together for, like, eight, nine years. Yeah. And we've, like, lost it on each other on set before because it's so stressful. It just is. <laughs> is everybody well, hushing you, away from you? you you're, you're, <laughs> you're spending a ton. Like, I'm spending so much money. Um, And you're just literally sitting there like, we have to finish this. We got, this needs to look good. This is all this, all this pressure, you know, and then he's got all his pressure too. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I, I love it, but yes, it, it drives me insane sometimes <laughs> for sure. But the outcome is amazing though. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, I had the chance to listen to, to happy and the th first thing I noticed about the, the song was how poppy it sounds. And that you're actually singing through the whole um, song. I think yeah. that the second verse is really kind of yeah, yeah, Melo yeah, but it's not my normal. Yeah, it's kind of like melodic rapping, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And I was wondering, was <laughs> that intentional? Did you did you wanted to try that out, or did it just happen? Um. That song was kind of a nightmare at first because I made like four versions. The song is called well, Happy and you're calling well, it a nightmare. Well, it used nightmare. to be a song called Older. Huh. And it just like, I just like, it's that thing I talk, talked to you about earlier where I just like couldn't finish it. Like it just like, I'm probably going to finish it later. But, and then I ended up starting to write that song. And then I was going to try to get someone on the second verse just didn't end up happening, which I'm glad I didn't. Because, like, basically my buddy was like, bro, I showed him, like, a snippet of something I wrote. And he was like, you have to, like, rap the second verse or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I was like, fine. <laughs> so I kept trying to write it. And finally I landed on something I really liked. I mean, I thought it was cool because I was like, um, this is a song I wanted to go to radio with. But I didn't, like, when I go into radio songs, I'm never like, I want to make this more poppy it's like i you want it to be something catchy but i also was like i want it to be emotional and relatable and i guess i mean i who, who knows how people will feel about it but i love it it's one of my favorite songs on the record um i i think it's i don't know i think it's super relatable and it means a lot to me just because i feel like it's such a cool It's a cool but like interesting concept because I feel like when you listen to it, you, you're not like this is depressing. Mm -hmm. But then when you actually the, like the music feels like kind of upbeat and energetic. But then when you actually listen to the lyrics, you're like, well, this is kind of sad because this person's saying, "I don't know who I'd be if I was happy." But that's, that's a line I wanted to talk to you yeah, about. Yeah, but that's like how I feel. Like I've been this way for so long that like feeling happy it's like if you ask anybody they're gonna be like yeah i want to be happy yeah mm -hmm. i want to have joy or whatever and i would say that too but then when i actually dig into it uh i'm not very good at changing and things like that and i've had to like dig into things in my life and i'm like i don't i sometimes feel like i don't know who i would be 
-hmm. Like, I don't know how to function that way or like, I don't know how to not worry about everything and get anxiety about things or like, and then I fear like, am I going to be the same artist if I was happy? Like, how, what would I even write about? I've always talked about how, you know, I'm in a bad place. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that line's kind of like, what do you mean? I don't know who I'd be if I was happy. You'd be great you'd be happy but for me it was like it almost feels like i'm letting a part of my uh personality or like identity die or something if i do that i don't mm -hmm. know how to explain it. it's it's strange but hopefully people relate to it i mean it feels relatable I, I, to me do, but that's yeah. my life so i don't know but what do you think is missing for you in order to be able to say i am happy because from outside it looks like you have a lot of things going for you. you have. I don't think it's anything outside. Uh -huh. yeah. I think that's why I like celebrities and people get so depressed because it doesn't have to do with like <clears throat> outside stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, sure. Like family and all those things, like hundred percent, like mm -hmm. some of my most like best moments are with my son and my wife and f my family for sure. But I'm just saying, I don't know. Like if you're not happy and you have all those things, I think it's all comes back to like, what you have going on inside yourself like not allowing yourself to be happy or like we're all shaped by our past you know how mm -hmm. we were brought up or whatever how we feel and i think it's just sometimes over like you kind of train yourself to be a certain way um and so yeah i feel like i just kind of did that in some way so yeah it's not i mean i have more money than i could ever need I have a beautiful wife, an amazing son, a family that I love so much. Like, there's so many things I don't have to worry about. But it just goes to show that, like, that stuff, like money and stuff like that, doesn't doesn't buy happiness. It like helps you not worry about certain things. Mm -hmm. But then you just like we just find new things to worry about. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I just thought when you were saying that is maybe it's total bullshit, but. Maybe the feeling of happen happiness that we experiencing right now mm -hmm. is the most happy we can get. Hmm. Of course, there are moments where where it sparks, right? Where it's like you're more happy than in others. But the baseline of happiness, it would it be depressing if the level of happiness we're experiencing right now. I think it, yes. that just depends on where you're at in your life, probably, because there probably are some people who are like, mm -hmm. there's people that aren't like me who don't feel like me who may feel happy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Personally, for me, I know I could be more happy and live in the moment more and enjoy things more. So for me, I know that's not the case. But I also think that can be like a dark hole that you go down for people who are like, I'm unhappy and this is the happiest I'm ever going to get. Um, you know, that's definitely, there might be someone who is happy and that is the happiest they might get. I don't yeah, know, maybe. but I, I do really feel like a lot of people don't live in the present. I don't, I live in the past and the future. I don't live in the present. I'm always thinking about the past, what I could have done better. And I'm always thinking about the future. And if I don't fix this or do this, like this, and this is going to ruin this for me later on and blah, blah, blah. But, like, it sounds like something I feel like everyone says, but it's just something I that frustrates me about myself because I do think I could wake up years from now and be like, you know, my wife will tell me that. Like, you're going to get to the end of your career and you're not going to have enjoyed any of it because you're just so obsessed with this and this and this. And she's right. I mean, I'm like, I really want to figure that out so at least, you know, my last couple records when that day comes i'm like you know what i enjoyed my those last tours um it's not that i haven't enjoyed any of it i'm just saying like most of the time i'm just obsessed with work mm -hmm. just obsessed with making it better or you know what's next yeah so just being more present is is the next thing you want to work and on enjoying comes, like yeah, actually enjoying. taking a second Like on my last tour, I definitely had some moments where I like looked out at the crowd and I just felt like, um, not to sound corny, but just like genuinely thankful <laughs> and like just wow. 
you know, like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And I don't do that often. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of um, a cool moment for me because I don't do it very much. Yeah. Um, Also, you knew your album is going to come out next week on Friday on the 7th of April. Congrats on that, sir. Hope is going to be released. And in an interview, you once said that you make music um, from the place where you currently are. So Mm -hmm. I was wondering... Um, what was the place you were in or from what kind of mindset where you start start did you start working on hope? I think this album was such a big problem for me because I struggled with my I've always like written about my actual feelings and my actual life <clears throat> and I was in I'm in this like weird limbo of like being super self-aware, still struggling to change some things, but also, I am getting better in other areas and also struggling as an artist to being like, man, I want to give my fans something different and creative, but then some days I don't feel different than what I've been or what I put out in the past. So I think that was a huge, like something I, not, I think I know I really got in my head on this record. because I was like, man, I want to make something that's like impactful and hopeful in, uh, but still emotional, but not so depressing. And I think I just like, There was just a lot of moments and things that songs that I I couldn't finish just because I was so obsessed with like, does this sound like the same thing? Is this this? When really the best music you can ever make is music where you just make it. You don't like obsess about whether it's as good or like whether you've done something similar before. I feel feel like I really got my own way on this record. So there's definitely like um, a hopeful side to it. There's still emotional stuff to it, but I feel like it's just still definitely a journey. Um, <clears throat> I think there's some really impactful moments. Like I feel like Mama's gonna be awesome for people like to hear because if you follow my journey, um, you know when I put out "How Could You Leave Us," however long ago it was, if you heard that song and then you you hear this song on the record, I just think it's cool to see the growth. Of like someone you followed for years um, and see how like things can change. I think it'll be encouraging for people. And then people who maybe still, their parents still alive, they might feel like, man, I need to like call my parent. Because you never know, man. You never know how long they'll be here. So mm. How was writing the song emotionally for you? Uh, I mean, it was powerful. I actually wrote the song long time ago but i just remember like i remember showing it to like family and showing my wife and stuff and it's just like a lot of people get super emotional when i show it to them but it's like a different kind of emotion that's why i'm happy about like to show people um or excited to show people is because i feel like it's not like i don't know i just feel like it has a different emotion than stuff that my other stuff that you feel emotional about like it just makes you feel like i don't know people just have to hear it but i'm just i'm really proud of that one and i feel like people are gonna relate to it yeah but um mama's not the song that you have a feature on with right no because there are two songs on the album and the features make so much sense to me i love them also that's awesome um julia michaels and corday um why were you drawn to to the both of them um, I just think they're both amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of like in my own bubble a lot of times. Like I, I don't really do any feature. I don't do a lot of features anymore. Um, but like I think Corday is just dope. Like he's just, he's just dope. He mm-hmm. is. Um, and I what think do you appreciate most about his work? I just I just like his vibe like I just like uh I respect him as a writer um yeah I just think he's he's dope I try to find I feel like sometimes people force um like features Mm -hmm. and I just felt like I just don't trust a lot of people like I just sometimes I feel like the features just it just doesn't make sense even if it would help both people or whatever but to me it's just like especially when you hear the song it just like to me just makes sense Mm. and i feel like uh i mean he he killed it um and then julia michaels um 
I mean, dude, she's just crazy. She's a crazy vocalist. Yeah. Um, I'm always in my own bubble just listening to my own music, but whenever I hear, like, I feel like I would, every time I would hear a song, I could always tell if she would, like, I could, he- like, mm-hmm. I would hear the voice and I'd be like, oh, that's got to be her singing that yeah. right there. Or even the writing, man. Yeah. It's just like, when she sent me her verse, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm excited to hear that because she paints like, she's like you. She's very cinematic oh, in her man, lyrics, she right? she kills it. And she's like a way better singer. So she's like, she's like going all over. A, yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about both those songs. Um, what do you feel like um, is the impact of the performance of an album you put out? Because I was wondering if, of course, you have a certain feeling before you put your album out about the project, right? Mm-hmm. Does that shift with putting it out and getting the resonance from from people, from fans? Um, yeah, I mean, it probably could shift. It depends. Like, I've never been more numb to a project that I'm putting out, so I really don't know what to expect. I think mm-hmm. <laughs> this album has some of my best songs, like some of my best songs on it. Is it my best record? I don't know. Like, I think it's, I think it's r- really good. It's just I'm so numb to it. Mm-hmm. I can't listen to it anymore because I've been hearing it so much. <laughs> and I know this is like not good promotion for your album, but I'm just like, dude, that's just honestly how I feel. Good job, sir. <laughs> um, but no, like I said, there's I think there's some of my best work on it. And I'm always like, I'm just ready to have it out mm. and get on the road. Yeah. And uh, yeah. What aspects of your life? Um, are you most hopeful of? What do you mean? Um, because, I mean, where are there different areas where you hope to get to a certain point to achieve something? Oh, yeah. To uh, I have a dream of, like, selling out arenas. Mm-hmm. That's, I guess... Uh, I'm surprised you haven't goal of yet. Well, I've done, like, some really big shows, but, like, doing an entire tour in arenas is is, is just hard to do mm-hmm. um that's like a big jump but sometimes it's weird because a lot of cities they don't have that in between venue like mm-hmm. where you can do eight thousand people in seattle but you know then the arena i'm not sure if it, i know i did eight thousand last time i was there but i'm not sure what the gap is but then the arena might be fifteen thousand, mm-hmm. and that's like mm-hmm. too big of a jump And so then I've always, like, aired on the side of caution where I'm just like, man, I'd rather sell out a venue for 8,000 than do 10,000 tickets and there's 3,000 tickets that don't sell or something. So it's it's pretty nerve-wracking for me, but mm-hmm. also it's exciting, too. So it's like you just kind of got to go for it. I feel like this is this is my chance to try to do it. If it doesn't work, it is what it is, but uh, we're playing a lot of arenas on this one so yeah so that's also what you're most excited about coming up next for you yeah just that's a goal i have that i'd love to reach mm-hmm. um i've already reached a lot of my i mean i reached goals that i never could have imagined that i did. what was the last goal for you that you reached that you were really proud of um i think like the success of let you down like i could have never imagined a song being that big like mm-hmm. even while it was happening it was like i listened to it and i'm like yeah it's a good song but it's not like i just could have never imagined that it would have gotten that big like that's probably one of my biggest biggest moments that i feel like people just don't ever get to have that i mean obviously there's a lot of artists that have but i'm just saying like you look at the world how many people get a song that does that so I, it's just we're still playing I'm, it on our radio crazy. station yeah, yeah i'm like super proud of it i think um you know i may never get that moment again so it's like that's probably another moment for me i've got a good feeling about happy yeah i i love it i i hope it does well well you never know man sometimes you i feel like sometimes the songs you're like this song's amazing yeah you put it out and it's like people are like okay and then you you're like oh this song's all right and then it's like <laughs> the biggest song it doesn't yeah. make any sense 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Yes, it was a thanks pleasure. for having me. Appreciate I had fun. It.